this series of videos is for you, the 92 parliamentarians in the state of Western Australia. You have the power to change these laws. And that is what we're not even asking. We are demanding. I was out for a ride with my girlfriend and I was riding bareback because back then you did silly things like that. Um, and we were on the home right stretch and I had a horse, um, horse on the outside, my pony in the middle, and a cat came out. Horse jumped, I didn't have a saddle on. She didn't even go anywhere. She just, I just pretty much slid off onto my back. Um, unfortunately, I'd slid off onto a concrete curb and unbeknownst to me, I lacerated a kidney and um, fractured my spine. But I've always got up and shook things off. So when I got help to get up and got home, um, I'm the oldest of eight kids, so you don't wake mum and dad unless you're dying. Didn't know I was injured badly. And then about five and a half years ago, I came around in my bed with my family all sitting around the bed. Um, John holding my hand, my mum was in the room, I'd had a seizure. Um, Dad saw me at Bustledon Hospital in the emergency and I was lucky enough my own GP was there. He was my GP of 10 years by that time. Yeah, I ended up being offered anti-seizure medications and I was seeing him that week because unfortunately I got to the point where I was seeing him every couple of weeks. Um, I was really struggling on Panadol Forte and Tramadol and um, Lyrica and all these other things that they were giving me. Um, I didn't have functioning bowels. I wouldn't be able to go for weeks on end. So talking about whether or not I was on so much medication I couldn't function, that doesn't bother me. Talking about the fact that um, I refused anti-seizure medications and my doctor laughed at me, that doesn't bother me. Um, I only had 50% chance of another seizure. When I went in to see him that week I decided that given that 50% to me wasn't very high risk, I wouldn't try the medications. So when I did have the second seizure I was a bit shattered because I already knew I was on a lot of medication. I already knew that the medications I was on were affecting me, making my health condition worse, um, creating a lot more trouble than I needed from them. They were making life worse than better. Um, then I, I tried things like PEA, um, is it PEA? M um, low dose naltrexone. I was willing to try anything that had any um, any success for other people. And cannabis became a topic um, and the WA government was looking at sneaking through cannabis access laws for patients. So I, I, at that point um, it was considered legal to get a prescription medicinally, so I thought it was worth me trying, but I wasn't going to ask my GP for a, a cannabis prescription without being sure that I would have some sort of benefit from it. I was already on enough medication. Um, I was actually offered free some cannabis from someone in the area. Um, he continued to help me till I actually got a prescription, but it was the best medicine I'd have, I had tried in 20 years. This is an issue that is actually a federal and a state issue. We believe that the prohibition of cannabis actually constitutes, uh, it, it breaches our human rights. It breaches current Commonwealth legislation against discriminating against people uh, with, on, the, on the basis of their disability. Um, I would had been asking him and my neurologist, my government um, neurologist, for a prescription because I had told them I was using it pretty much straight off the bat. I did tell them it was helping me 
I requested a prescription. Mm. I kept requesting for two and a half years until I took this jar into my GP. This actually represents three months worth of medications that I used to be on that now six bottles of this covers. Um, there's only 10 mils in a bottle, so 60 mils of this replaces this. Um, there's over 1,600 lollies in here, and I don't think many parents would hand this to their child, and it's only sugar. This lady was given all manner of dangerous, toxic drugs, which she said worsened her condition, didn't help it. That was all paid for on the PBS. That means by you and me and every other taxpayer. And now that Leah has a medication that works, she gets nothing. But she's saving both levels of government, state and federal, a poultice of money. She no longer gets her uh, necessary medication on the PBS. She's no longer showing up in ICU or emergency departments. And she's not going to her doctor every fortnight. And for that, she has to pay something like six times the black market price. That is what we mean when we say bad laws hurt good people. Um, I'm on Sativex and I use that as a spray under the tongue. It's the registered TGA medicinal cannabis product. It's the only one that is registered. The restrictions on the medication are such that even with me prescribe this product, I can't properly look up info on this product online. Nobody can. There is no list for GPs to refer patients to of prescribers. Um, and prescribers have got their hands tied. They're frightened of wording paperwork incorrectly. Um, my current prescriber trialled me on a Canamed product, which is mostly CBD. It cuts me down to zero in the bank every six weeks. There's no, there's no leeway. If I was to break a bottle of this, the access is so difficult that I would be two weeks without medication. Politicians, doctors are directing patients to the black market. It is a crazy situation. It has to change now. It's a, it's a very, very strict system. Um, even the reapplications are are a bit of a joke really given that now it's my anti-seizure medication and I don't see why anybody should be reapplying for an anti-seizure medication it's not like my epilepsy is gonna go away one day um, unfortunately that's something that I'm stuck with